Hi, my name is Amanda Bond, and I'll be presenting, I Don't Even Remember What I Read, How Design Influences Dissociation on Social Media. So before I dive into what we did in our study and what we found, it's important to first talk about what is dissociation and why study dissociation in the context of social media. Once that's established, I'll go into more details on our mixed method data collection and our results, specifically answering the questions, do people dissociate on social media? What is the influence of design on dissociation and why does this matter? So to first talk about what dissociation is, it's really common and all of us have done it, although we might not necessarily have known what it was at the time. So an example I would like to use is called highway hypnosis. Imagine you're driving down a large highway and you've, you're on an hour long road trip and there's not too many demands on your attention. The driving is pretty monotonous. It can happen that people will daydream while driving and still respond to the events around them in a way that is safe and responsive, even though their mind is absorbed elsewhere. And eventually they'll realize, oh, I should pay more attention to my driving and also probably not be able to recall the past few minutes of what they passed on the highway, the various cars that might have passed them, billboards, etc. So to go into more detail, this describes the normative dissociation process. There's typically some entry point, the actual experience of dissociation, and then an exit point. So you can start dissociating in one of two ways. The first is passive dissociation, where you're spontaneously absorbed in daydreaming and mind wandering during some sort of routinized activity. So this could be showering, it could be driving, it could be washing the dishes. You can also have active dissociation where people plan some sort of absorptive experience like watching a movie, playing a game, or reading. And for instance, in the example of reading, once you are reading, you become totally absorbed in what you're doing, where your attention is focused on a very narrow range of experience, which excludes or dissociates other context that we normally have. So you have a reduced sense of self-awareness, a reduced sense of agency, a reduced sense of the passage of time and a reduced memory of the experience. So after this has happened, your ordinary attention is restored. And people usually only realize they've dissociated in hindsight with a sense of, oh, how did I get here? So in the case of driving down the highway, realizing, oh, I've actually gone pretty far and I wasn't really paying attention. Or in the case of reading a book, looking up and realizing you started reading during the daylight and now it's dusk. Prior work has said that the pursuit of dissociative activities is so common in second nature that its role in our lives has not been fully appreciated or examined empirically. So with that in mind, why should we study dissociation on social media specifically? There's a lot of prior work that hints to this connection between dissociation and social media use, although it doesn't necessarily use the term. I'll talk about two papers in particular. In the first example, there's something called the 30 minute ick factor. And this is when people realize that they have used social media for 20 to 30 minutes um, when they only meant to check in briefly. And then they have this sense of disgust afterwards. A recent study has also shown that there's a high correlation between hypnotizability and smartphone addiction. And being hypnotized is generally agreed to be a dissociative state. So this suggests that there is a link between social media use and in particular overuse and association. So now I'll get into more of the details of our experiment. Specifically, we wanted to answer the questions, do people's experiences on social media fit the normative dissociation model and does design influence people's likelihood to dissociate on social media? To, do, to answer these questions, we developed a custom Twitter client called Chirp. And within Chirp, we developed several different design interventions to either reduce or disrupt dissociation. This included a custom reading history label, custom lists, a usage stats page, and a time limit dialogue. Once we developed Chirp, we deployed it with 43 users for four weeks where we logged user clicks and captured dissociation using the experience sampling method. We then did interviews with 11 of our users and we quantitatively analyzed the impact of CHIRP's design interventions on dissociation. We found that people described both in interviews 
and through our quantitative results that people do dissociate on social media. And design does influence how much they dissociate. In interviews, people described passively entering dissociation. And without any prior knowledge, as far as we knew about what dissociation was, and without even knowing that was what we were trying to study here, this participant said, well, you know when you do that thing where you're driving and you forget you're driving and then you snap back, but you're still on the road, you know? It's like that kind of thing where you don't realize you're doing something. I'm on here reading Twitter and I don't even remember what I read. Participants also described becoming fully absorbed, for instance, all consumed, where they just forgot about everything else. They describe how they lost track of time, saying things like, you get tunnel vision on it, you just block out your surroundings, and then I guess I come back and I realize I was on it for two hours or something. Another participant described actively entering dissociation, saying, in a way, I almost hate to treat it as a mindless activity because it wouldn't be too popular for me to say this, but it can be like reading a book too. And that's an activity you're sitting down to do for 30 minutes and you're going to come out of it when you're done. While I can't go into too much detail here, we found that all of the design interventions that we deployed did statistically impact the extent to which people dissociated. And in most cases were correlated with less dissociation. And in the instance of the time limit dialogue, um, using that to exit trip was associated with more dissociation until it was disrupted by the dialogue. So what does this mean? First, we want to reiterate that seeking normative dissociation is not inherently harmful. It can be very beneficial and it's common. However, it's important to remember that normative dissociation means by definition that people will have a diminished capacity for self-awareness and less of a sense of agency, which are the tools that they need to stop their social media use once they've started scrolling. So we think that it might be this tension between becoming lost in social media and engaging in self-control that leads to so much dissatisfaction with social media use. Users essentially have an impossible choice where they can either lean into the experience of browsing social media and have the benefits of normative dissociation, or they can resist and maintain their self-awareness. So because of this, people have experiences that they find frustrating, but simultaneously are not willing to give up. Because of this, we think that this is a more productive framing for social media, quote, addiction. And we hope that future researchers will consider people's natural inclination to dissociate when thinking about why people overuse social media. And thank you so much for listening.